to that stage. Dolly's just asked me to give a wee bit of a, wee bit of a background as to where we started and how we got where we are. And that's actually, when you think about it, it's a long time since we started this process. It was over five years ago when our then Minister Valerie suggested to the Kirk Session that it might be good for us as a congregation to twin with another church somewhere else in the world. Uh, Valerie was very keen for us to do that because she felt it would nurture uh, and, and enhance her own faith. So the Kirk Session said, yeah, okay, we're up for that, so how do we go about it? Well, the good news is that the Church of Scotland, the, the head office, has got a department which all it does is uh, try and get Church of Scotland congregations to end with other churches throughout the world. But what is twinning? Well, here is a, a brief definition of the Church of Scotland's definition of twinning. Twinning is a relationship between a congregation from the Church of Scotland with a congregation from the World Church. These direct links are built upon and congregations build friendships, share ideas, work on projects together and learn from one another. Congregations come together as, as equals, both acknowledging that they have much to learn and much to share. Twinning is not about raising money to send to your twin church. It's about developing personal relationships. So we approached the head office and we said, well, we were quite keen to advance the, the process of twinning. So at that time, there was a, a young lady by the name of Karen Francis, who was a, from Jamaica, and she worked in head office and dealt with twinning. And Karen very kindly came up one Sunday morning and addressed the congregation. And one of the crucial things that Karen pointed out was that the twinning process takes time. It's not a whirlwind romance. You don't sort of go to the club, boy meets girl, two weeks later they get engaged, and then the next month they get married. It's not that type of relationship. It takes time. Carmen was proved right. What we were asked to do was to prepare a church profile, and that was to give some brief details of what we are as a congregation and what our, our aspirations are in, in terms of a congregation. We then pass that to head office, as I call it, and then they try and match our profile with profiles of other congregations throughout the world. And the head office provided us with profiles from congregations in Sri Lanka, Nigeria, and even the Caribbean. But we, we just couldn't, we couldn't come to the conclusion that any of these profiles really matched the Olden Abbey and, and where we wanted or we thought the Olden Abbey should be going. So we went back to head office and we pointed this out. And then they said, well, there's going to be a conference in Scotland later on this year about world climate. And there's a bloke coming over from Ghana. Would you like to meet this chap and maybe have some discussions about uh, churches, congregations in Ghana? So we said, yeah, we would. Well, you probably know that the guy came, met with us, and he enjoyed our company. He thought the Olden Abbey was great. The guy was Charles Agboklu, big Charles, who you'll remember was here a couple of years ago. And he said, or he asked, would we consider twinning with his own congregation at home in Ghana, Elon Parish and Home? So we thought about it, and we said, yeah, 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 we're up for that. So we went back to head office, and we explained that we had this discussion with Charles. He thought his communication would be good with us, so is that something that we could process? So head office did everything.
where we can share what we are with others who love you, where each person has something to share and something to bring, where compassion and respect shape missionary endeavour. Gracious God, encourage us this evening as we learn about your church in Ghana to fully understand the breadth and depth of your Spirit's work. For your spirit is not confined by border crossings. It doesn't have a workload that's dependent on a genus. But rather it's enlivened. And that's enlivened by faithful discipleship of open hearts and willing hands ready to hear and to move when we're prompted by you. And so loving God, help us to receive and be transformed that we may know in all that is spoken and sung and said, that we've met not just with each other, not with the people in Ghana, but with the living God. These prayers we offer now through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, you are given a quiz sheet. <laughs> so we're going to do the first five questions. And the first question was, the currency in Ghana is, and the choices are Gandhi, Sedi, and Akro. Any takers? Sedi. Well, well done. The currency is Sedi. <laughs> <laughs> is that the only one you knew? <laughs> oh, by the way, switch off iPhones. Do you know, the last time we had a quiz in this church, somebody was there on Google. Not very funny. Okay, the official language in Ghana, I have here English. The is welcome to in every English oh, is yes. spoken by a very small number of people. English. So if you say after me, Mia Weso. Mia Weso. So I, I promise I would say that sorry. So Mia Weso. First thing we should say, by the way, never, ever, ever travel on the day the Royal Highland Show starts. <laughs> Could you follow us on there? Um, yes. Um, give you a guess. You sit in the second row at that side. Yeah. <laughs> when we arrived, the bridge that we would normally take from Accra to Cove was actually shut for about two years because of the structural defects. So we had to take the ferry, and there was actually two of these kind of met midway going on the way, so uh, yeah, it's a long ferry. Beautiful uh, countryside, you know, beautiful views, very, very busy, I mean the queues went far back. There we go. It was just fascinating to see, you're, you were on a minibus and there's this one big long queue and people would sell things car to car to car, so you've got boiled eggs, fish, raw uncooked, bottled water, ice cream, I don't know how that worked. Uh, shoes, t-shirts, you name it, you could buy it at the side of the road. It did leave a bit of a question for littering, admittedly, but um, you could, I think we were in the queue, it was two hours or something like that. Two hours or something And it was hot, and we were at the air-conditioned van, it was hot. Any uh, guess what that is? Atta. Atta. Well, not exaggerating, it's huge, huge. That was near the residence that Neil and I were staying in, just around the corner. To give you an idea of how big it is, that is about the height of the game in comparison. Oh. And there are everywhere, what ones? Big ones? Fat ones? <laughs> and so. This is Ewan Parish Church. In parts of its own little tower. Beautiful dusty. It's quite big. It's, I would say it's bigger than ours. Yeah, it's got, it has a balcony as well. But it's definitely bigger than ours. Air conditioned inside, fans. Which was just as well because we were sitting there, water dripping on us, and they, they felt sorry for us and switched the fans on. You used to go <laughs> like that, but the fans didn't go. <laughs> That's the. Now, there were actually three ministers. This is minister number one, Albert. That's his residence there. And that's the uh, the, the Kirk Session Hall? The uh, Kirk Session, yeah. So we have on this side, Minister Number One, that's Albert. Then we've got Festus, that's 
the chap that hosted Neil and I. Didn't be, best I remember. Uh, that's Lawson, he's minister number two. Nicole, Neil, and Jezrin, he was minister number three. He's sort of like parapetetic minister. He's actually moved on to different parish now. There's another minister three in, in place. Yes, yeah, so it's a team looked after us. And that would be my host parents. Um, my host mum Belinda and my host dad, I stayed in the house with them and three daughters, um, all younger than me, who seemed to take a great delight in everything that I had, such as uh, my mobile phone, all my clothes, books, um, books that I had, like a, what was that? I think it was like Channel and Chocolate Factory, a silly book that I took to read, and they were saying it was one of the ones they were reading at school. So they'd come in and said, they were sitting at the end of the bed and say, Can you read us? And that would be like a became like a nightly routine, they would just sit and listen to me read. And I really got bored to put the TV on, and that was then we'd be gone. <laughs> Chocolate's TV came on, and boom, it was gone. This is actually yeah. in the church offices for um, the Church of Ghana. This chap here is not the moderator because the, somehow there was a breakdown in communication and they didn't know we were actually coming. So we ended up with the general secretary instead of the moderator. The moderator was away um, in Germany or something like that conference. But funnily enough, they had just been at the general assembly in May, so they'd just translated. Part of the main stay of our, our, life, our life in Ghana was the meals together. Breakfast, dinner, supper, you name it, we had it. Uh, and what I was laying off there, I don't know. Yeah, I feel was terrified, pointing at me, he's like... <laughs> what did I mean? <laughs> I don't know if it was like made me sing or something. We were encouraged to try local food. We, we did uh, go there with the tin and trying as well, but we also had British style food cooked for us because um, the lady that owned the restaurant had actually lived in the States for quite a number of years. So um, we started. They got on very well. The evidence was before you. Literally, this shirt was oh, measured wow. for. This is an experience yeah. and a half. Uh, I've been on in Malawi, so I knew roughly what to expect. But girls, what's the way? No idea, no idea. First of all, the boys brigade had got a band. And the reason the boys brigade had a band is um, or part of sorry, part of the reason that the band held there was the bride was actually one of the leaders of the boys brigade. So we had the food band there. We also had the girls' brigade turning out in uniform and then parade at the wedding. It was actually quite interesting for me because I picked up a euphonium from the band. Uh, I haven't played for about 30 years. I still managed to get some music out of it, so it wasn't too bad. We took the instrument back very quickly and I had that kind of myself on. service all to himself uh, while the bride was being um, fetched by the band. And then there was the hours Mara so yeah, it went on quite well. The, the act it was doing there, that was about the third level that he lifted the veil to. He actually lifts it up in sections and backs away, <laughs> lifts up and backs away. And I think after the second time, his groomsmen, here got a cloth that was dabbing and dabbing and oh, it's a show and a half just to go and see this way. And we have a dance in the church. <laughs> this is a lovely, gentle, soft African song. Actually, it goes like this. It goes. It's too high, sorry.
che dimitu vondi to la sini, e la bena to bene fia dudu, che ple musat, che ple mati coque. Yeah, we were lucky because well, yeah. it's that ah, you got to go home. Um, you could actually chill because you were digging. And I was dragged straight away down the thing. But we went over the call, but uh, a sample of shopping, shall we say? Uh, so would you like to explain what happened there? Uh, yeah, um, I think the one word I can use for the shopping is very, very, very time efficient. Um, when we found out that Neil Vicky were ill, uh, Nelson had decided that that would be a perfect opportunity for me to go shopping as I went to buy gifts to bring home. Um, so I told Nelson a couple of things I wanted, like shirts and dresses, handbags or chocolate and stuff. And uh, Nelson seemed to make a mental note of everything I needed. And it was seriously a case of, right, you need a dress, we're going to that shop, fabric, bought. Next shop, fabric. Give me to the women to make the dress, you make the dress, gone. Next shop, right, what do you want? Chocolate, there's a chocolate, boom, done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of what kind of handbag do you want? I was like, any handbag. He was like, I know the best one. Went to the shop, he picked out all the handbags, all the purses, <laughs> boom, done. And uh, I think the whole shopping experience was about half an hour to get basically a week's worth of stuff. Um, I know you've had a wonderful time, but thank you for going and, and really becoming so involved when you were there and embracing everything. Um, on our behalf.